I'm Robert Burl, and I'm delighted to have produced another important film for photography. The camera in my hands, I would say in, in most people's hands, the camera is nothing but a camera, but in my hands it's a musical instrument. It's, I don't even think of it as being the camera. I, I think I really broke away from it when I got into the mining towns. It does something to me. I'm just excited about, about actually working in ghost towns. It looks like I'm always photographing the presence of the past. I was mostly interested in, in the life that was left there by uh, the population that lived there a hundred years before, uh, what they left in those buildings, their spirit. I was mostly interested in that kind of thing. Yeah, I was very motivated and to try to capture the, the lost soul, the lost spirit that had actually lived in this place. And that was what Oliver was really trying to capture, was he described the essence, the, the, the equivalent of something. But the very first day I picked up a miniature camera, the first question I really asked myself, what can I do with this camera that I can't do with the large sheet camera? And I started to experiment by just using these long strips which go 20 or 30 feet long by exposing the material twice in the camera. The, the town has to accept you, the people. They, you know, you're, you're coming into something new and, and to, take, to have a camera, I think sometimes they accept you a little easier. But if you have a 35, they know that you're going to photograph. You're not going to try to destroy the, any, any of the buildings. So the basic of it, I think that's the big reason I, ca I carry the small cameras, but you have to kind of be accepted. Uh, if you always have a fear, uh, you're not going to do any good work. Oh, oh, well, now we're going to have to get in something real deep. And, uh, you know, I feel that, that we all have a, what we call an inner life which is the most important of anything we own, the inner life. And I, you know, and here I'm reading a little article by a very famous composer working that's in uh, resonance with the San Francisco Symphony. And he said, you know, when, I, when my dad would talk to me, all he would talk to me about how much money I was making. When my mother talked to me, she always said, what, what is your inner life doing? What are you doing with your inner life? And as a photographer, an art photographer, an art, I think this is a thing you should be concerned with because you know you're in photography you're not going to make much money but you're doing it maybe because of this inner life that's part of you the real you that's, that that the art itself will help to expand it and grow and, and give and give you a better understanding of yourself and give you a better understanding of what's going around you if you're just going to do it for the money i think you're not going to gain anything out of it but you have to do it because it, it, it's, it's something inside you. That, you know, it's like a religion that teaches you something. If I hate to make a second printing, the first printing is an is a, a, a act of love. Boy, it's just so beautiful. I have to come back a year later and do that same print. Then it's an act of work. Two different things there, two different things. <laughs> I didn't know who Mino White was, or who Ansel Adams was, or who <laughs> uh, Edward Weston was. I thought maybe they were ball players or something. <laughs> but when I first discovered that, you know, the Paul Strand show, boy, I really learned, boy, this is, not, this, is a, a, this is like a musical instrument. You can do fantastic, beautiful things with this instrument. So, from my point of view, I truly believe that when history begins to record about photographers from the very beginning, let's say from 1839 as we go forward, he will be one of the giants. There's no question in my mind.
truly one of the giants.